Hi, I'm going to try something different in this video. And we're all going to go back to 1683 to meet my eighth great grandfather. He was born before the Mayflower had even reached America. Stephen Bowsfield was born about 1616 in the English parish of Ravenstonedale in the county of Westmoreland. It was then and is now a very rural part of Northern England. And for generations, sheep have wandered these hills. To put the date in perspective, Stephen lived during a period of the English Civil War, which took place between 1642 and 1651. Close to death in 1683, and at his home in Longhill, he wrote his will in November and died sometime around December. In January, his three executors took an inventory of his possessions. The wonderful thing is that the will and the inventory still exist. And we're going to look at some of the fascinating things that a 17th century sheep farmer owned and left in his will. Here is his will, and it's written in plain English, and most of the words we would recognise today. I've tried to translate the will. It may not be 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. So let's go ahead and look at the translation. In the name of God, all men, I, Stephen Bowsfield of Longgill, in the parish of Orton, alias Overton, and in the county of Westmoreland, yeoman, being in good and perfect memory, doth upon the 20th day of November, in the year of our Lord, 1683, ordain, constitute, and make this my last will and testament, in a manner and form as followed, committing my soul unto Almighty God, and my body to a decent and Christian burial. I give unto my son Richard Bowsfield ten pounds. I give unto my son Christopher Bowsfield a bed of the best clothes that I have in the house. I give unto my son John Bowsfield and to my son Christopher Bowsfield a great meal chest equally betwixt them. I give unto my son Richard Bowsfield and my daughter Mary Bowsfield all the rest of my bedding, vessels and household stuff I have equally betwixt them. I give unto the witnesses of this my last will and testament, every one, twelve pence a year. And all the rest of my goods, movable and unmovable, I do give unto my son Richard, my son John, my son Christopher, and my daughter Mary, whom I do make executors, jointly a day discharging my debts, legacies, and funeral expenses. And in testimony that this is my last will and testament, I have hereunto set my hand and sealed the day and the year above. Said the names of the witnesses as follows Philip Bowsfield, George Bowsfield, and Stephen Fothergill. Philip and George were likely Stephen's brothers. The interesting thing in this will is that Stephen basically splits everything four ways between his three sons and his daughter. The presumption is that his wife Sybil has already died. So in order to split everything equally, they took an inventory of Stephen's possessions a little time after he died. And here we have everything in pounds, shillings and pence. 20 shillings to the pound and 12 pence in a shilling. At a time, a labourer's pay would have been about one shilling a day. Today, the average labourer in England makes about 80 pounds a day, which is about 160 shillings. So that's 160 times what we have today. So let's look at a translation of the inventory. Here's what he had left. I put interpretations in blue. His apparel. He had one pound and two shillings in his purse. Four keen. A keen is the old English plural word for cows. Two steers. One heifer. He had five small beasties. Two little calves. He had one mare and a stag. Two foals. Four and forty weather sheep. A castrated male sheep is called a weather. Weathers are less aggressive than rams. He had twenty nine hog sheep and twenty nine ewes and two tubs. Rams that are used for mating are also known as tubs. He had a quantity of corn. He had a quantity of hay. He had his husband do gear. He also had saddles, brides, and ropes. An axe, a wombo, chisel, hammer, and pinchers such like, a girdle and brandeth, and such like for cooking on, a brazier for a fire, he had pewter 
tableware. He had a wood vessel in where food, he had meal, malt, beef, salt, butter and cheese. He had a chest and an ark. Chairs, stools, a table and loose wood. Interestingly, he had an hourglass, obviously. No watches in this time. He had a stone trough for his horses, a broad stone, bed stocks for beds, sacks and pokes. We've all heard of a pig in a poke. Obviously, being a sheep farmer, he had a quantity of wool, a cupboard, bedding, linen, woolens, peat, probably used for heating, poultry, all of which told to 73 pounds, 5 shillings and 4 pence. And after resolving his debts and paying for the funeral, there was 43 pounds, 2 shillings left, which is no mean sum. Stephen was a yeoman farmer, which refers to someone who had owns or cultivates his own land. He had his family around him, and he had goods and possessions that we can still recognise today, 340 years later. And this is what genealogy is about, making links and family connections to the past. I hope you found this brief video interesting. And if you have, please like and share it. And of course, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and watch out for new videos about once a week.